Hi, everyone, and welcome to our third annual Autism Hope Summit. Ah, oh, we have a real treat for you guys today. Our next speakers, you probably have seen them at some point in your life, Chris and Jacqueline from the original uh, cast of The Real Housewives of New Jersey and amazing autism advocates are here today to talk to you about how the heck are they balancing life with a kid, a marriage, more than one child, autism, and all of the above. So thank you guys for being here today. Thank you. This is Our fun. <laughs> We're hiding out in the basement so we can talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's real autism right there. <laughs> right. There's a lot of noise upstairs. Yeah, or, or real parenting 101, actually. It's like, I'm, I feel like I have to hide in the bathroom often, so. <laughs> <laughs> <I've done. laughs> well, before we get started, can we talk a little bit about, obviously, we, you know, many of us, we've watched your journey. We know what amazing advocates you guys are for your own son and just amazing parents and just great role models as a married couple, you know, but for those of the people that might be watching another country, maybe they don't have television, um, maybe talk about why you're so passionate about what you guys um, and do and, and why you want to continue helping the community. Um, well, when our son was diagnosed, um, we had a lot of people reach out to us from all over the world, really, to, you know, give us advice and support and guidance. And it's sort of um, us paying it back. I want to help. We both want to help as many families as we can who are dealing with an autism diagnosis because we know, you know, how that, how, um, you know, emotional that can be and, and stressful at times. And, um, you know, I, I like to, whatever knowledge I've gained along this journey, I just want to share with other people. You know, I, I think we bounce things off each other and we can learn a lot from each other. I love that. And what, what were you guys told when you first got the diagnosis? Um, we were basically told that uh, our son was on the autism spectrum and there was nothing we could do about it. Um, we would just have to learn to deal with it and, and, you know, he probably, he may not ever speak and it really didn't have much hope. And we were really uh, furious because of that. I don't want to say the diagnosis, but because of the conversation we had. With we, the doctor. we just felt very lost. Yeah, you know? we felt just like very, there was like, no hope. And, where do we go from here? Right. We just have to learn to deal with this. And, you know, it, we really didn't receive a lot of hope until you know, we got involved in um, people from different autism organizations that dealt with biomedical treatments and, and um, you know, like a gluten-free, casein-free diet, soy-free diet. And then we started um, talking to other families that have had success with their children, healing their children, and just progress that other children have made. And that's what gave us hope. And that's what you know, once we started implementing a gluten-free, case-free diet is when our son got his first words. So then that gave us hope. Like if he can say this, he can say so much more and we're just going to keep pulling it out of him and, you know, keep pushing forward and see what else we can learn. And But I think at first we, we felt hopeless. Um, but after we started doing our research and started meeting people and started, you know, really going on the internet and searching and we, we, we found hope. Yeah, and we found the, we stories. found a lot of different paths that we could take, mm -hmm. and we just started exploring. And this, you know, from where he started from, where is he at now? Well, he started. He was um, completely, you know, not, he had regressed. So he lost all his words. He stopped singing. He stopped using utensils. He stopped making eye contact. He um, stopped riding his bike. Um, he had some, you know, stimulatory behaviors. Um, he, no eye contact, wouldn't answer to his name, couldn't follow a simple command, you know, bring that to mommy, nothing like that. Now he's following multi-step commands. He can say pretty much any words. Um, he's, I wouldn't say he's conversational, but he's now asking questions. His sentences are, he's got a lot of full sentences that he's learned. Um, he understands yes and no, uses that, you know, appropriately. Um, he's doing all the things that he didn't do before. Um, he gains, you know, a lot of that back. Um, he's actually become a little punk. He's, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's... Uh, 
he's, he's really <laughs> funny. That such a personality on him. He's so engaged. I would say he's very engaged in in his environment and and with people. He's very loving and affectionate, and you know he tries hard all the time. You know he's he's come so far with his language that um you know I hope one day he's he's fully conversational. You know. You'll get there. What do you think? That, you know, sometimes Absolutely. you prompt him, you know, you prompt certain responses from him. But uh, he's doing great. Well, and, you know, is there one thing, and, and maybe there is, and, and maybe there's not, is there one thing that you feel is helping more than others on your journey with him? I definitely see a change with um, diet. And it was a lot easier to do when he was younger. Um, now that he's older and he's discovering more things, I find it a little harder to keep him on track than when we were 100%. Um, so that's been a little bit of a challenge, keeping him 100%. Um, I think ABA is amazing for compliance and just everything else. I, um, music therapy, um, hyperbaric. Um, honestly, I feel like it's a combination of things. Um, you just have to keep searching to, to see what works with your child. Um, but the diet, I feel like I always tell every parent start with the diet because the goal, the first goal should be to get them the healthiest they could be from the inside out because then they're going to respond better to their other therapies if they're getting all the right supplements and eating right. And I feel strongly about that. Absolutely. And, you know, is. Obviously, I saw Chris yawn. Obviously, you guys are hard, hard workers. I know Chris is out there doing his business and businesses. And, and then Jacqueline's like, yes, we're going to do this interview. And yes, we're going to do this. And you no, guys are out there just working. You know, <laughs> as my son woke me up at 630 this morning, he tapped me on the shoulder. He said, he asked where his iPad was. <laughs> so I've been up since. <laughs> and yesterday, he was like cutting down a bunch of trees. So yeah. <laughs> And that brings me to my next question. You know, how do we keep a family in balance? I mean, it's to me having just typical child, um, you know, my friends that have those, their lives just seem, and maybe it's just Hallmark on Facebook, but it sure seems like their lives are so much easier. <laughs> you know, you see them at the soccer matches, you see them at the par parties, their barbecues, and here I'm trying to like figure out how many supplements go in this thing. How do I make this yeah. particular, you know, recipe? How do I? The insurance denied this. Now I got to write a letter to get my doctor to write another letter so I can fight this, you know? So that seems like how my day is. And I can only imagine when, you know, you guys have successful businesses, you've been on television, you have all this amazing stuff going around you. How do you keep this balance of this family going? Because if you guys can do it, honestly, it should be a lot easier for someone like me. <laughs> um. You know, lately Nick has uh, been wanting to wander, so he's been trying to escape the house. So we're all on like high alert, twenty four seven. We have like three locks on every door. We're we're in high alert. Um, but um, I guess we work really well as a family. I would say one, we have a really good sense of humor, and I think that's really important because if you can't laugh at what you're going through, it's going to be pretty tough. So we found the humor in pretty much everything. Um. <laughs> I also come from a big family and I have a brother with special needs actually, but so I grew up, you know, not only with a lot of drama in my house with, you know, there were six boys and five girls. 11 kids. Um, but, you know, I, I learned when I was very young to be patient and to, you know, um, accept whatever is going on in your life or whatever's going on with your family. Like for us, it's like, bring it on. Like whatever, we could pretty much handle anything where we have very thick skin. Either that or a numb. Yeah. I'm not sure. No, we, but... we, we have very thick skin and you know, if you put a wall up in front of us, we're going to smash through it. So yeah. that's how we are. And just giving each other breaks, you know, looking for those social cues, you know, when someone's getting like annoyed or you know needs a break it's giving each other even if it's 15 minutes like go take a bath you go watch your show go have a glass of wine <laughs> whatever it is um those breaks are so important to just recharge so i think we all kind of bounce off each other as i know you guys are always all over the place and there's just so much that you got going on your your 
your schedules, it just seems yeah. like you do it with such ease. So obviously it sounds as though you have a great support system within your families and within your immediate family unit. Yeah. And so as a mom, well, I was going to say, Jacqueline, as a mom what, and a wife, you know, what is your biggest challenges then? Um, biggest challenges. I mean, really just, you know, it, it's, very overwhelming as, as a mom, you know, when you have a special needs and a lot of your time and attention, you know, tends to go to your child and their well being and everything. So you have to really balance out the time with everyone else, with your husband, make sure you have that alone time with him as well. And sometimes I always say go out with other couples because sometimes even as parents will go out and we'll start talking about our kids. When you go out with other couples, they don't want to talk about your kids. Like, you know, you get in other conversations and you laugh and you have a good time. It's like a nice break, you know, and, and it's fun for us. And, you know, trying to find that time when the kids, you know, you get a breather just to like enjoy each other, whether it's having a glass of wine, you know, downstairs or, you know, just getting out for, it, it could even be a half hour. It could be, you know, whatever you can do, but you know, having that separate time with your husband, you know, be romantic, try to do all the things that you would do if you were dating the person, you know, things like that. Sometimes we'll, you know, take a bath, you know, just any chance. You get. Back to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and, and Chris, same question. You know, what is your biggest challenges of being a husband and a father and, and also having that special needs child? like many of us have, it's, it sometimes overwhelms you and it over consumes everything, you know, part of your life. And so how do you balance, you know, doing that dating kind of thing with your wife? You know, um, there are times when it's overwhelming, you know, having a special needs child and especially when you invite friends over and they don't get it, like they walk in and it's not a typical household. You know, they don't, they don't, they don't, <laughs> Really? You'll, hear, you'll hear like banging upstairs yeah. and Chris and I just keep like eating and we're like, and the other people in the room are like, they're like, what well, the hell is going on in here? Do you need to go check on that? We're like, nah, it's fine. But, you know, for us, <laughs> typical noises. like I said, it's, it's overwhelming at times, but like Jacqueline said, I know when to jump in and when to help out with Jacqueline and she knows to jump in and help out with me and we always make time to you know, watch a movie or go on a date. And usually when we go on a date, we'll go with another couple and, you know, we'll enjoy just hanging out, having a good time and, you know, having a great meal and enjoying a glass of wine. But it's important that you make the time. Even a lot of times we'll go for a walk around the lake. We have a, a trail right across the street from our house and we'll take Nick with us. And he's actually, one of the things he really enjoys is yeah. walking around the lake. Unfortunately, he always wants to go back every single minute of the day, but, you know, and a lot of times he'll try to go back himself, yeah. but, you know, we, we, um, we're, we're very aware of what's going on in the house. And even if Jacqueline and I want to break, you know, Ashley will jump in or a family, another family member will jump in and help out. But I have to say another good idea for couples is to really get involved together and, you know, go to an autism conference, you know, convention, trade show, whatever, um, go together and spend like all you need. If you can get away for one night or, or two nights, one to two nights, then you go, you learn stuff that you can take home to help your child. And it's also your time alone together. You get a night out alone. You're in the hotel room. You go to dinner. You can meet other families going through similar, you know, as you uh, struggles as you, um, Learn it's so funny so because when we, when we go to these conferences, I'm sure you know as well, you know, a lot of times we'll go and be like, oh my God, like these people are like going crazy. Wild. <laughs> they're wild. But they're, that's their <laughs> free <laughs> their downtime. So yeah, we, I always we enjoy like, it. Autism has long gone wild. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's going on? This is its own reality show. I know. But it's great. You know, it's like, you know, everybody needs that break, you know, and touch this. Is that Absolutely. Now you guys have other uh, children in the house um, that, you know, are not diagnosed with autism. How do you do that balance of, because um, I know for me, I just have my one son. He has autism. I honestly cannot even imagine having more children. I'm barely making it with the dog and my son. I don't know how you have 
more uh, people to worry about, you know. Um, so how do you balance that, you know, because I'm sure your other children have, you know, they want your attention as well. Yeah, well, I have to say, um, raising my typical teenage daughter was just as challenging <laughs> in a different way. Um, but, and then we have a son, CJ, right now, who's 15. And I have to say, he's so easy. He's, he's actually, you know, he's such a good kid. And he's learned so much from his brother and really learned to yes. be a good person, a caring person. He joined he volunteered for a program at school to help special needs children. He plays he like teach him how to play sports. Or... And, you know, we're, we're really proud he, of the person he is becoming because of this experience. He doesn't judge people's idiosyncrasies, yeah. you know, a little thing like nothing phases him. You know, he, he's he, just very accepting of people. We call him the child whisperer because yeah. every child loves him. And oh my God. He, he really lives his life with a very open heart. So yeah. I think it was because of this experience that he learned to be a very caring, open person. So. And we, we do things separately with him too, because, you know, it's hard, you know, as a family when we do things, because a lot of time is catered to Nicholas and making sure he's okay and everything. So there are times where Chris will take CJ alone or we'll go and do something with CJ totally separate from Nicholas, you know, get a babysitter for Nicholas and then enjoy separate time with him, you know. But now, honestly, um, he's starting to get to that phase where he's more interested in, you know, playing Xbox and hanging out with his friends. We're, we're not as cool anymore. Starting? So, you, starting. He is. Already, he's there. He's, he's, there. he's there. He's already engaged. But he still likes to watch a movie with us. So, you know, if Nicholas is in bed, we can watch a movie. Or, you know, this CJ and Nick had separate spring breaks this year. So, you know, we had a good time watching one of his favorite shows, the stuff we can sit down and quiet and watch something without the brother interrupting. <laughs> so, you know, we just make sure like everybody gets, everybody gets a piece. <laughs> so. We also, everyone's program, like we have on our security system, we have an alarm that goes off if the window opens or if a door opens. So whenever we hear anyone hears the door open, we always- Everybody goes running. Everybody it's like a fire like, alarm. Who was that? We make sure it's not Nick, but yeah, he's quiet. That's wonderful. It sounds as though you guys definitely have, you know, everybody plays a role. Everybody has a responsibility, but it I, it sounds as though that's what's bringing and keeping your family um, truly a family. Yeah, um, that, you know, <laughs> all of those people together. Now, when you guys first got the diagnosis, and I know a lot of families are watching. Uh, last year, we had over 160 uh, countries register, and so you can only imagine different you know we live in the u.s and uh you know every country is a little different of what their protocol is but what what advice can you give to somebody that is just getting the diagnosis for the first time and they're feeling just a little bit lost they're feeling a little scared you know what advice um you know can you give them of where to start where do you even begin i mean i'll uh, you can say your what you think and i'll say what i think i mean i always tell people to start with the diet start from the inside out because that's something you can control right now. So look into a gluten-free, casein-free diet, soy-free diet, check out the fine gold diet, um, you know, eliminating unnecessary toxins in their environment, whether it's what you're putting on their skin and their hair, what you're cooking with, just check out all the external toxins that you're adding because you just want to stop as much as you can and get them healthy and healing from the inside. Heal that leaky gut things like that, because that's something you can control. And during that time when it's overwhelming and you feel lost, research the success stories of families who have come far from, you know, their nonverbal kids. So they're talking or they're in high school now or they're graduating or, you know, look for the success stories because that'll keep you going and give you hope that if they could do it, then your son, your child has a, a shot as well. So just not to give up and to just, keep doing, keep, keep searching for anything that, you know, one thing might work for one child that won't work for yours. So you get discouraged and you're like, oh, that worked for them. It's not working for my kid. That's okay. Just give it enough time. When you see it's not helping your child, just find something else because there's things that. I think most importantly is don't waste any time. Jump in, you know, Jacqueline got on, on the path before I did. Um, I was in denial for a while, but I think the most important thing is to not waste any time, jump in with both feet, you know, 
do your research, ask questions, learn, try everything. Educate yourself. You know, um, education is power. And, you know, you, you really get to know the people in the community, make friends. You know, Jacqueline's on a group text with, 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 with a bunch of people. I have a few group texts with different autism yeah. moms, and it's the best thing. If you can do that, find a chat group. Because you go in and everyone like gets in there and we'll talk about if we're having a bad day or have you tried this, you know, and it's, it's yeah, you share it's resources, nice. yeah. you share information it's great. and you build relationships and, you know, hopefully that will, that'll um, grow into you not only doing what's best for your child, but helping other people do what's best for their child or making suggestions. And, you know, you never know, you might just make a suggestion with someone and, you might help them get their child on track and there's a lot of satisfaction in that too. Yeah. So I think the most important thing is to be proactive, uh, go out there and do the best you can. Don't ever, ever give up. You're going to have your bad days. There's no question about it. We yeah. have ours, yeah. but you know what? You pick yourself does. up and you keep going. Yeah. And um, Chris and I were actually putting together a website right now called Chris and Jack giving back. And we're going to share. Oh, cool. I love yeah, we're going to give a bunch of, um, you know, resources on there, things that we've learned, and then keep it an open conversation with other anyone else who wants to comment or, you know, it'll just be like an open forum of, uh, we'll just share all kinds of things on there. So that's, we're working on that right now. One of my favorite Jack is, um, <laughs> you know, Chris and Jack give back. But um, I, I, one of my favorite things is answering emails, um, people that reach out to me, families. I love hearing back. I love hearing progress. Um, you know, someone just um, emailed me today. Their, their nonverbal child is, is speaking now. They're, they're talking. Um, and they changed the diet and they did the supplement. So that was helpful. I, I, I love hearing oh. stuff like that. And I think it's important for those that are watching you know, wherever you are in your journey, and I don't care what age that child is. I mean, I'm hearing success stories at all different levels, at all different ages. Yeah. I've been on, you know, the conference circuit for over a decade. And I remember seeing kids who were little, having no language. And then, you know, even around eight or nine, really having limited language. And by age 12 or 13, they're like, hey, Kristen, what's up? And talking <laughs> to me. And it blew me away. I'd be like, oh my gosh, I remember <laughs> when you were spinning and tapping in the corner. Like, are you kidding? This is awesome. And <laughs> some of these kids, I'm like, wow. Yeah. I, I love it. Now, um, you know, for those people that have been following your journey, um, I know you guys at one point were on the cover of People Magazine and, you know, you had your show for many years. Um, I think there's a lot of um, false thoughts that people might have for, around people that, you know, it must be so easy for you. You have a live-in cook, right? You have a nanny. You have five housekeepers that live in your house. I mean, these are the thoughts that people would think, yeah. you know? And now I know you guys. You guys are some of the most down-to-earth, most generous, most amazing, funny people that I've met that are in the advocacy world. Um, but yet, I've heard people, you know, talk to me and be like, oh, it must be so easy for them, you know? So what do you want people to know about your family? We don't have a cook. We're the cook. Um, the we I wish you did. I know. I wish he's the cook. <laughs> I for um, Nick. He's cook. been cooking for us. Um, <laughs> he's a better cook, I think. But um, I cook too. But I, I mostly cook for Nick because he has a whole separate meal than the rest of us, and sometimes I eat a separate meal than the, than them. But um, we, we have a lot of different meals. I think the bottom line is that um, we don't have a chef. We don't have a chef. We, we, we don't have a nanny. We actually enjoy cooking. Um, that's part of our we therapy. We hardly have a babysitter. That's like our downtime. My niece. You know, our babysitter's our niece. Yeah. Um, our, we don't have people to come <laughs> in our house. We do it ourselves. Yeah. We're very hands-on with everything. Yeah. And we, you know, we, we're we very uh, independent. Not independent. We're very um, hands-on. Hands -on <laughs> and we're very, uh, you know, we're proud of that. Not only that, but we're, we're trying to teach our kids, too, to do these things. And, you know, our son, I make them go and do chores around the house. I because, made him wash the baseboards the other day. Because Man. I want him to do the same, you know. And if, <laughs> and if one day we decide to have a nanny, well, then we get a nanny. But right now, it's not for us. Well, and I love that because, honestly, I think people do think, you know, well, gosh, they've been on TV. They must, you know, are they even there? And the reason I wanted to address that question is because I know you guys are there. I know you're yeah. rolling up your sleeves and, and you're there at six o'clock in the morning. And he's asking for his iPad and, you know, when he asked to go around the lake, you know, as you said yeah. before, 
and you know, and everyone's running to the door and I, the minute the door opens. And I think that's important because, you know, everybody seems to believe that it's easier somewhere else. It's easier across the pond, right? Or it's easier over, you know, in that person's life. And honestly, autism, I feel affects, if you have a child with autism, it affects you the same way as other family in the sense of that picture that you've got was this world and this is how I often think of it you know you had this etch-a-sketch and you drew this thought of what you thought oh we lost you sorry uh, there we go oh, there we go it came back so you drew the, it's almost like this etch-a-sketch and you I remember drawing this idea of what I thought a family was you know you had a husband and a wife and um or whatever that family unit was and you had a dog and so many kids and you went on vacation so many times a year and they played soccer and baseball and all that good stuff and then boom autism and pet and before you knew it it was like no nope, hold on let's redraw this we have supplements and special diets yes. <laughs> and therapists coming in and out of our house that we never knew these people weren't going to leave you know and it's on and on and on and yet you for me i just shake up that extra sketch and i redraw whatever that day is because i feel like each day is a kind of a new challenge and day and i love that you know, I want, well, I don't love anybody that has to go through this personally, but I love the fact that there are people like you out there that are saying, hey guys, you know what? Yeah, we've been on TV. Yeah, we've been on the cover of People Magazine. Yeah, we've done this, but guess what? We're rolling up our sleeves too. We're right there with you because here's the thing about autism. It does not care if you are rich, if you're poor, if you live in London, if you live in Kansas, if you live in Jersey, if you live in California, if you're, you know, white, black, purple, green, orange, whatever, like, it doesn't care. It, it, it comes into your house and you either decide to roll up leaves like you guys do, or you go to the corner and you cry. And I love that you guys are out there saying, hey, we're married, which honestly, I don't know what the real percentage is. I've heard obviously rumors and you know, people will say somewhere in the 70 to 80% of families aren't making it. They're, they're beginning divorced. They're not uh, you know, surviving this diagnosis. You know, how do you guys keep your marriage strong? Like, what is that secret? I know you guys talked about date night and, and, you know, balancing each other, but there has to be a little bit more than that if, you know, think about this, 70 to 80% of these other families aren't yeah. able to do whatever you guys are doing. I, th I think it really comes down to Jacqueline um, hit the lottery when she met me. She <laughs> <laughs> That's a humor. <laughs> that ever happened to her. <laughs> it's, um... You know what it is it's a sense of humor it's just mutual respect for each other just you know you respect the other person enough to give them a break you're, you're not selfish because you know you're going through it but so is your partner and knowing that and um you know just balancing time with each other your child know that you're in it together i think when the husband gets on board it's a lot easier and when i first started um, this journey, there wasn't a lot of dads that were going to these um, trade shows and things. It was mostly moms. And now I see more and more dads coming. I feel like more and more dads are getting involved, which is great. And I think if you're on the journey together and you have a common goal and your goal is to, you know, bring out the best that your child can be and you're both looking for solutions and paying attention to each other's um, cues when you need a break and, and need each other then I think you'll be fine. You know, I think, you know, you just need to be in it together. I think, you know, instead of one parent doing it and the other one stressing out, they can't handle it. Like you, you, you have to be able to balance those days. Well, I think there's a great example that just recently happened to you guys. If anyone's following them on uh, Facebook, you've, you've probably seen this story. Um, I won't go into total detail of the story, but what I'll, I'll tell you what came uh, out of it for me was something happened to you at the library with your son. You called your husband and he came like basically uh, he calmed you down on the phone. I'll let you guys tell a little bit of that, but you know, it, it, what it showed to me was, and then he came home at least from what I read. Um, and to me that, that showed like, wait a second, you know, my wife is going through something. I want to make sure that I'm there for her. And, 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 and he came together as a family right away. To me, that's a huge huge piece at least for the outsider looking in of how yeah. to keep a marriage strong because often you know a lot of us moms are out there we're going through stuff we're dads you know and yeah. maybe somebody's you know quote unquote too busy and or they don't have time or maybe they don't really understand that this was a scary moment for me however that felt so can you give a little bit of maybe just to give a little piece of what happened and then 
you know, maybe Chris explain, yeah. you know, when that you got that call, it didn't even seem as though there was even a question to, to run to your wife. Well, when, when I got the call from Jacqueline, I, um, I was shopping for food to cook. And she <laughs> went to the library with Nick. And I couldn't even understand what she was saying. And the, wor I mean, the words just weren't coming out of her mouth. She was hyperventilating. I thought the worst happened. Um, and then she told me what, it, you know, she finally calmed down a little bit. And she told me what had happened. And, you know, I immediately went home. And, you know, I said to her, listen, it's over. Um, take, get it, just get a hold of yourself. Why don't you go lay down a little bit? Uh, you know, I'll... Uh, I got Nick or whatever. And then when we, we, uh, we, we had the conversation, you know, it, it, Jacqueline was very upset and she posted a story on her social media. And then a lot of people started chiming in from all over the world. You know, people started saying, you know, that's how terrible that was and what a terrible situation. And that's when I knew that we now had to do something good with that. And we had to turn a negative into a positive. Mm -hmm. And, I, um, you know, I immediately, um, I, uh, um, Jacqueline actually, well, you posted the story, but I, long story short, I don't want to, yeah, we're not going to yeah, tell you the whole thing. The, but. Re the reason why I'm not, I, I, a lot of press, a, a ton of like news stations, press, everybody has reached out to me and I haven't responded um, as of now because I don't want to go on and as like a victim, this is what happened to me, shame on the library, things like that. What? When I go on the news or on on a media tour, I want it to be because the library made a change. They implemented some new sensory uh, inclusive programs and made positive changes. And I want to be able to say, "Hey, my the library listened, and now they're now they're sensory inclusive." You know, they're we're actually meeting changes. with the library this week and the yeah. mayor because we not only want to, you know get an understanding as to what programs they have, if any, um, but also make suggestions on some other programs. And there are a lot of people that on. we've met along the autism mm -hmm. trail who are, you know, going to help us implement the right programs and yeah. make it a friendly place for all children, whether they have special needs or they're typical, but we want it to be an example. We're trying to make an example that, um, can go, you know, across the country. Maybe other, inspire some other libraries. You know, there are libraries that are doing, Thing, you know a lot of great things now and I, I'd like to see more of that but we wanted to be in all public places not only libraries yeah. it could well, be that's in what I was gonna say. the story for me wasn't even so much about the library I think all of us at some point have had a situation with our child and you know been not felt welcomed somewhere and what I loved about it, it was because I know it's happened to me multiple times with my son somewhere and um, Often, you know, at least in my situation, there was nobody there on that other side when I got home crying or telling me to go take a nap or whatnot. And I know a lot of people don't have that. And what I love about your guys' marriage, and it just, it really warmed my heart. Like, I, at first, I didn't really know what was going on. I had to, like, kind of go back. And, you know, I, I saw one post, and I, I Chris, missed, like, you the first two posts. And, and I, <laughs> what? Text. I didn't Text. hear you. What'd you think? Happens. Get on the mom. <laughs> I know I need to be so but when when I read what Chris had wrote it really like brought tears to my eyes and it brought happy tears to my eyes and then and then and what I mean by that is that I, I could picture myself as a woman or as a mom being somewhere being asked to not really be invited there for whatever reason regardless of where it is and I don't think it should happen anywhere truly anywhere I don't care if you're at a market if you're at an airport if you're at a park wherever right yeah, well, um, and uh, what I loved about it, though, is it was a great example of you guys coming together as this unit and him as a dad really understanding, at least in my mind, it was like, wait, he really understood. My wife went through something and it was really traumatic for her. And regardless if people don't really understand, because maybe if you're watching, this never happened to you, or maybe you're a professional and you don't have a child with autism and you don't quite understand that trauma that that really does feel for a mom or a dad to be somewhere and not feel welcomed. And so what I loved was that I love that you guys came together and, and honestly, kudos to both of you guys because they're, the only thing I can come out of this is that you guys really, really love each other and you guys really like each other. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it seems like to me. Um, and Chris, when you did get that phone call, did you feel your first instinct was, was it just to get home and just give uh, Jacqueline a hug? Yeah, I mean, I was I was actually with my brother, and I said, we got to go. We got to go now. So we dropped everything, uh, went right home. 
Um, and then honestly, immediately got to work on, okay, now what are we going to do to turn this into something good? Yeah. You know, and, you know, it's funny because I was talking to um, someone in town and he says, boy, did they mess, they, they kicked the wrong person out of the library. <laughs> and I, <laughs> you have no but idea. I said, but and maybe I'm that's, I won't give up. you know, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, for us, we're not, you know, we have a platform to make some noise and we're going to make noise and we're going to make as much change as we possibly can to make sure that every public place is safe. Every public place is welcoming. And, you know, we're not saving the world, but we do right. want to do our part and, and try. If we can make a difference, we're going to do it. You know, so. Educate them on, a, you know, some of the characteristics of autism that they may be seeing and maybe be a little more tolerant of. You know, because See, Jacqueline will tell you how to build a watch. Yeah, I'll tell you what time it is. I like detail. I love what I'm gonna do. Um, well, I, I think you guys are such a great example that you guys are such amazing advocates. Um, and a couple more questions, you know, um, as a dad, obviously, I can't speak about this, <laughs> but Chris, as a dad, what advice can you give to dads to make that little, and I don't want to say a little bit of effort, because I know there's a lot of dads out there trying, but I also think there's a lot of dads out there that are just lost. They don't know how to fix it, because it seems as though in dad mentality, this is like, you know, how they kind of think is, I want to fix something, and it's, this is something that you can't really quite quote unquote fix at least right away and whatever that means yeah. you know how and when what happens is I see a lot of dads walk away meaning even if they're still kind of there mentally they're not there they're checked out you know this isn't their son now that's playing football this isn't their son that's playing soccer or baseball that what they dreamed about and they have to kind of tweak those dreams a bit how what advice can you give because I've since I've ever seen you you've been a solid rock, you know, to your family, you know, what advice can you give to those dads to maybe encourage them to, to maybe see autism in a different way? Well, like, I, I think I told you this last time, you know, when Jacqueline and I got married, we, we, we made a commitment to one another, but you know, the advice that I would give is that it's, it's a whole lot easier to embrace the situation, to show love for your family, for your wife, for your child, than it is to run the other way. Running the other way is only gonna cause bigger problems and more problems. And you really have to set an example for everyone else in the family. And you know, my wife, um, I think she loves me more for it. You know, I, I support her, I'm always there for her. I, I always try and pick up the pieces when she's falling apart and vice versa. But you know, I think the advice I would give is just to love them more and to give them more of you. And I think in turn, um, you'll get more love back and more of them back. And I think it built, it'll build your relationship to be stronger and better. And you know, there are things now that, I, th I think this whole situation with Nicholas has brought the entire family closer together. You know, we are, we're pretty rock solid when it comes to coming together during tough times or during any kind of a situation, you know, um, there are people like on social media that'll, you know, they make assumptions and think that, you know, we're doing things because we want attention. We're doing this because we want that. But, you know, just try messing with one of us on social media, the whole family jumps in and it <laughs> becomes like, you know, we all stand up for one another. And I think a lot of that is because of the example that was set early on which was hey we're a family you're you know, we're we're gonna go we're gonna get through this together um and we're gonna help each other this and, too shall pass. and this too shall pass and we, it, whatever it comes of it whatever it is it is but we're, we're certainly gonna make the best of it and we, we try to make the best of every situation and, and i have to say too um just because if you have a typical child that doesn't guarantee your child's going to play football and do all those things that you, you dreamt of. I mean, I know uh, parents all the time, they have all these dreams for their typical kids. They want to do certain things. I want you to be a doctor like me. And the kid's like, no, I'm going to play in a band and I don't care about, <laughs> you know, or whatever it is that they want to do. So, you know, 
parenting is just hard in, in general too. And it's not always what you expect. And, and when you're young and you dream all these things, that how your life is going to be, it's like, you got to let go of all those expectations and just go with the flow and see where it takes you and enjoy the ride and find the beauty and all of it. And Get a sense of humor right now, and <laughs> just. Yeah, but you know what's great is like even <laughs> you know CJ and all his friends they they love Nicholas. You know, they yeah. come over and they look out for him, and you know they, they. I think we made it loud and clear our position as standing together as a unit, and that I think trickles down to our friends, to our extended family, to everybody. Gosh, I can't believe that I was, as I was saying that this hour is almost up. I always love, you know, talking with you guys. You're such an inspiration. And for those that are watching, if you guys want Chris and Jacqueline in your living room and you're just like, gosh, how come my significant other wasn't here to watch this or my sister, my brother, my mom, my dad, you know, it's it really, as they were saying, it brings the whole family together to try to help our kiddos. It's very easy. All you have to do is go to Autism Hope summit.com again that's autism hope summit.com you can buy the whole package of all of the different speakers over 25 top experts in the country have come together on this summit and here's the cool part when you buy the summit all the dollars that are raised go back to the Autism Health Alliance and it goes back to our nutritional scholarship fund so we can help even more families. So for me, this is a full circle. It's a win-win for all families. So I am just, you know, I have just loved getting to know you guys throughout the years. I, you guys always make me smile. You always inspire me. <laughs> and you, I mean, every time I look at both of you guys, oh gosh, no, I, I, I look at you guys and I think, gosh, you know, they're doing it. You know, whatever recipe, works for you guys is working and you guys have a really great chocolate chip cookie recipe is how I think about it because it's uh you guys are doing really good and you're doing good in the world and you know there's with this autism with the rates that they're being we need all the help that we can get so you know I, I love that you guys are standing up there saying hey listen you know we, we gotta we gotta make a difference now there's families right now watching. They might have just got the diagnosis. Maybe they've been on this journey for quite some time. What's the final message you want to leave them with? Never well, give up hope. For me, is um, never ever give up. I don't care how you're feeling. You know whether you're depressed or not. Take a day. Because <laughs> what a difference a day makes. You know you yeah. you you uh, you'll get through it no matter what, and it'll make you'll get you'll become stronger and stronger. And just don't ever give up and just continue to learn. Just continue to learn. Keep learning. Keep looking for stories of hope to give you hope. Start with a gluten-free diet. Just start there. Start from eliminating toxins in their environment. Connect with other people in the community. And celebrate the, the accomplishments. Yeah, there, there there's will a lot be accomplishments. of A lot of accomplishments with these kids. I love that. I think that's all great advice. And I think regardless of where you guys are at in this journey, you know, we see kids continuing to progress and they are capable of limitless growth. And so I love that message of never giving up. And it yes. seems as though every speaker we've had on the summit, they, they say the same thing over and over again, never give up. And this yes. is hope with the plan with real strategies and tools that you can implement into your home. So thank you guys for watching. And until next time, bye guys. <laughs>